Hi everyone, welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. Today we've got a lot going on in the shop. I'm showing you how to make these male knobs that will fit into my rustic flag jig. The other thing that I'm going to do is take the file that I've already provided to you free with the female knobs, added this knob into it, and show you how to design it. I'm also showing you today how you can move the router to be able to change bit from the XY axis and be able to move it, change a bit, and put it back without having to reset it. And last third thing is I'm showing you the new improved replicator feature that's in easel. So let's get started. A lot to cover. Making the knobs is actually going to be really easy. And what I did is I opened up a file where I have shared this in the past on making the female knobs. And what I'm going to do is just select this and I'm going to hit Control C and I'm going to bring this over into a new window and we're going to work with that to make our new knob, which is going to be a male knob. So now I'm going to hit Control V. And there's the new knob. Now what I'm going to do is just bring this up over into the center of my area to be able to work with this. And the first thing I want to do is make a copy of this. So I'm going to hit Control V. So now I have a copy. So I'm going to bring that up next to it. And on this second one, what I'm going to do is put this as a fill. And I'm going to now reduce the thickness of this because this is literally cutting all the way through at the 0.75 or actually have it at 0.72. But what I want to be able to do is have this cut down to 3 eighths of an inch or 0.375. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in at 0.375. So now I have the depth. The next thing that I wanted to be able to do is put this directly on top of that so I still have my cutout. So now I want to center these two items so they line up exactly the same. And I just click the left and right to be able to have that centered exactly the way I want it. Now, the next thing, we need to get this sized correctly because it needs to be quite a bit larger. So I can just select this window and I want to make sure I have both of them and then we're just going to make this bigger. And what I want to be able to do is make this about two and three eighths of an inch. So let's go over here to the shape. We'll click on that. I want this locked and we'll make this 2.375 that gives me the size of the knob that I want. The next thing is I want to be able to have a circle that has no cut depth on it. Now that I have my center section for it, I want to create the size and I want the size and this has to be locked and I want to create the size of this at 1.2 inches. Okay, and then from there, we'll slide this over into that area. Okay, next let's just highlight everything, and then we're going to center this. So now our center part is dead center, and it's not going to cut at all. So what will happen is it will cut down around this, and then it will cut out the knob completely. Okay, the next thing that we have to do is create the pocket that will hold the bolt. So what I'm going to do is select the app and we're going to scroll down and select the polygon generator. And here I need to have six sides. And as far as the radius, we'll set this exactly um, in a moment in the work. But right now I'm going to put this at 0.3 of an inch and we're going to go ahead and import that. 
So now we have this item to be able to work with. And what I want to be able to do is set this as the outline and I want to be able to cut this on the inside. Okay, right there. And I want to get my size correct. And I know measuring with my calipers, I need to set this to, and we're going to lock this, at 0.553 and that will give me this exact size that I need. The next thing I want to be able to do is create this as a fill. So we're going to go over here to my cut, select this as a fill. Do We need to get our depth of this pocket and I know from measuring with the calipers it is going to be 0.25591 we're going to grab this and slide it right over into this point. It doesn't have to be centered because what I'm going to do is select all of them and do the same thing, center it. So now my knob is completed. The next thing that we need to do for this jig, I need six of these knobs. Now in the past, what I've done is just highlighted all of this and hit control C and control V. And then I had to move everything around and line it up. But there's an easier way to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is delete this. So that is now gone. We're going to highlight this and we're going to use another app in our easel software. And it is called the replicator right here. Now then, we have four of them displayed here. We have a choice to be able to go with columns or rows. I'm going to go ahead and select this and put it as three. And now I have my six knobs. I have them spaced a half inch apart, and that will be fine. So I like this. I'm going to go ahead and import that in. So now I have all six of my knobs. Now what I can do is highlight all six and we can move them down to my bottom corner and we can actually get a good idea on the size of the material that I need and it looks like if I had a piece that was six by nine that would work really well so I'm gonna go up to this section I'm gonna select this as nine inches I'm gonna select this as six and now I have this right where it needs to be in my work area. But you know what I want to do? I want to center it. So let's highlight everything. Let's go up to the edit menu and select center of material. And there we have it. With this whole entire section highlighted, I want to be able to hit control C. And I want to bring this into a new work piece and we'll do control V. And here's why I want to do that. I want to be able to do this in two different carves. I want the pocket cut out with a 16th inch bit and I want everything else cut out with the 8th inch bit. So what I'm going to do now is delete everything that I don't need and we'll be able to carve this. So on this particular one, let's delete the pocket. So this is now ready to carve. I'm going to go ahead and select my workpiece down to the same thing. I want that nine. I want this six inches. So now you can see the size of my material is exactly where it needs to be. This hasn't moved, so these are ready to carve. And I have it set at my eighth inch bit. I need to eliminate everything now here except for the pocket. So I can select that, cut it, select that, and cut it. That doesn't carve, so that will be fine. But if I want to select that also and cut that, perfectly fine. Okay, I finished removing all the different objects except for the pocket. So all that's left now is do the carving. 
we're going to carve the pocket first and then we're going to shift over to the next work piece change bits to the eighth inch bit and then we will carve these now this first process to cut the pockets actually took less than 10 minutes to be able to carve now it's time to change bits and i need to put in this straight bit for an eighth inch and i need to make sure that this stays the same now, a lot of people will ask how do you do this without interfering with your xy zero well i can move this a certain number of inches change the bit and then move it back the same number of inches and it will be the same point and that's what I'm going to do right now. So I've set easel where this XY axis will move one inch at a time. And I'm going to click on it and that's one inch, two inches. So that's two inches from my original XY axis. And now I'm going to change the bit. And this gives me the flexibility to be able to move and do that. The other important factor to remember is these bits do not have to be super tight. I think oftentimes people tighten these bits way too tight. It's about a half, a little more than a half a turn, and that's good. Now then, because this bit is significantly longer than the other bit, if I move it back to two inches, it's going to hit. So I need to raise this up. So I'm going to raise this up one inch. Now I'm going to go back to the original XY axis. That's one. That's two. That brings me back to the exact same point. Now the next thing we have to do is use the Z probe to establish the height. And what I'm going to do is move over to the center of my workpiece to do that. And to be able to do that, we're again going to move one inch at a time. So that's one, two, three, and we're going to move over one, two, three, four, and that's a good place to be able to do it. Okay, the probe now is finished, so the z-axis is now set. So I can remove this. The next item on the checklist is to set the xy-axis. So again, with this, where it will move one inch at a time, I'm going to move four inches over. One, two, three, four. And remember, I have to come down three inches. One, two, three. That brings me back to the original XY axis and we're ready to begin to carve. On this process, it started out at 40 inches a minute and I increased it to 80 inches a minute and it still carved excellent. The nice thing about having my glue and tape method, I can actually pull the parts out. Okay, to be able to test these out, these are all set. I'm just going to drop it in, screw it down, and that is it. This is so much easier than having to deal with the racket. This is a whole lot faster. Slip this on, drop it in place, and that's it. This is perfect. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.